Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. Now today we will not cover Python, um, it's more like a space science tutorial I would say. So I think I will also call it more like not tooling or a coding tutorial but more like something like concepts I think. Because the idea is um, that last time I showed you the open source planetarium software Stellarium and in our next Python sessions I would like to compute with you some um, sky coordinates. So where is Venus, where is Jupiter, um, what is the distance between Venus and Jupiter and so on. And to, um, <clears throat> to understand uh, the results we have to first get a small introduction or understanding of coordinate systems. And this is what this today's session is about. I will use Stellarium to explain two major coordinate systems that uh, are used in, as in astronomy and space science in general. And uh, the one is the so-called um, equatorial coordinate system and the other one is the ecliptic coordinate system. Now you have may heard about it and also if you uh, have noticed it in my last tutorials and today we will cover the basics, um, so the basic definitions and under to understand what this is all about. Now let's go first to our Stellarium software where we have the night sky of um, today. So it's the 21st of uh, October, so I record this video a little bit earlier. And yeah, some of you, or especially the, the ones of you who are living in the Northern Hemisphere, um, maybe this is a little bit familiar, this picture. We have the moon currently. It was now full moon, I think, a few days ago or even yesterday. Mm, yeah, illumination 95.8%. So I think it was actually yesterday. And we have here now in the south Jupiter and Saturn um, showing a nice pair. So if you think, wow, these are bright stars. No, these are actually the planets Jupiter and Saturn. And <clears throat> since astronomers need to, well, somehow orientate, uh, orientate uh, at the at night sky. So you cannot just say, well, there is Jupiter, there is Saturn, we need coordinates. And these coordinates are then um, yeah, set in your telescope to point your telescope into the right direction or even manually or digitally, of course. And the same thing applies also for um, space-bound telescopes, like for example, the Hubble Space Telescope. And there are, um, there are two major coordinate systems. Mm, the one is more like an Earth-centric one. The other one, the ecliptic coordinate, let's call it, is a more generic one for our solar system. And we will start with this one because if you recall the Python sessions, we worked a little bit with this ecliptic J2000 coordinates. And before we take a look at the sky, how it looks like and how it's defined, let's move to my amazing drawing skills um, <laughs> where I would like to explain you the basics of uh, the ecliptic J2000 coordinate system. Now here in the center we have the sun. So our, our sun is here or we are the center of the so uh, solar system. And of course we have our home planet Earth here revolving around the sun at around 150 million kilometers. Now if you observe the sun from the earth it has a certain position in the in the sky in the day sky or night sky and we have of course also our stars in the background so one could it's one assumes so we assume now that the stars are um, at infinity and they are also steady state so they are not moving. Of course if you recall our last session um, this is not a hundred percent correct but let's stick with this um, with this simple picture. So they are in infinity and they are like a drawing on uh, on a on our cosmic ceiling. Mm, just for you th to imagine that here is the sun and we have some kind of um, yeah screen with stars in the very very far away. Now imagine now it's uh, springtime. So spring starts and at this point where spring starts, we say okay. Let's define the x direction of our coordinate system as seen from the Earth to the Sun as the x axis. So this is the definition of, um, of, our, of our coordinate system um, 
for the ecliptic J2000 and this is the x-axis. Now of course the sun, uh, Earth revolves around the Sun. We take a look from the top now and uh, which means that, this, uh, that the Earth is moving anti-clockwise around the Sun and it um, describes uh, a plane, the ecliptic plane and the um, the, 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 the uh, yeah the, the perpendicular vector that points towards us is defined now as the z um, the z axis and the z axis well points towards us so out of the uh, of the screen of the monitor which results in a y vector that is showing into the let's say clockwise direction of the earth so here for springtime why I say springtime and not all the time? Well, the point is when the Earth is moving and the Earth is, for example, here, the coordinate system will not rotate. It will be steady state and is like this. Or even easier, we can move the entire coordinate system to the center of the solar system. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. So let's stick with this, um, with this picture. Um, the coordinate system, if you take a look at your um, atlas or so and you take a look at the earth you see that there are basically it's basically a grid which is which one lines are called um, longitude and the other one is the latitude and this one will be explained now here in stellarium now we don't see any um, lines here yet so this is like the night sky mm, but what we can do is we can um, turn off first the ground, the atmosphere and also the compass. So we have now the entire night sky as we can see here. And now we can turn on the ecliptic grid. The ecliptic grid is here. Now this looks maybe a little bit confusing but uh, let's work on this together. Um, we see here the sun. So I'm switching now to another telescope mounting. Uh, we have here the sun at currently some position and <clears throat> we see here the current the current um, longitude and latitude values so the longitude is 200 yeah, around 210 degrees and the latitude around zero degrees so yeah along the ecliptic or on the ecliptic plane now you can see the longitude are the lines here on the top that are yeah crossing our system and let's say vertical lines and the horizontal lines are the latitude values. So speaking or taking making the transfer to the earth uh, here zero degrees uh, this line is like the equator and the line at zero degrees would be the uh, latitude um, line that goes to uh, through Greenwich in, uh, in the UK. And well we talked about the definition of the of this ecliptic coordinate system so we said, okay, at springtime, the x-axis is pointed towards the sun. And this means that at spring, the sun has to be at zero degrees longitude. Now, let's take the clock function and move to, um, to springtime, which is like around, yeah, um, March, or it is March. Um, between mid and end of March. So let's click here and the 21st. This is like around where the mm, where springtime starts. And you can see that the sun is very close to the zero line here on the top, if you take a look here. And uh, well, this is actually also the definition when springtime starts, because maybe sometimes you hear in the media, well, springtime today starts at, I don't know, 6 p.m. 40 minutes. Yeah, it's always every year some some other minutes and hours. And this the definition is when the sun crosses the zero line. So we can move now a little bit the sun by adjusting the hours. Oh, it's now the 20s of um of march and there you see now we are getting even closer this is the zero line yeah it's crossing around 4 p.m utc on the 20th of march next year so this is now the x pointing towards the sun so as seen from the earth we are pointing to the sun and now it's like it's now um it's now october so we have now autumn 
and um, there, this fits also with the value we, we have seen a few minutes ago, right? The 209 degrees or so. And now you see the y uh, coordinates, um, the y the y axis points. Um, as if you take a look from the top, it points here into this direction. So we separate our circle into degrees, 360 degrees, and these separation are these longitude values. And you see here 15 degree line, 30 degrees line, 45, 60, 75, and so on. So we can now go around. 90 degrees so this is here the y direction of our coordinate system then we can go further to 180 degrees and then going back to 270 and then we have zero degrees again so at 200 no wait a second 270 yeah 270 this is then the beginning of winter. So mm, probably something like, yeah, like the 20th of, uh, of December or so. We can also verify this one. Let's center the sun. Oh, it doesn't want to center now. So let's go back 20s. Yeah, and we see, yeah, the 21st of December is crossing the, crossing the 270 degrees line. Now we can determine the time round about, yeah, around evening or late afternoon UTC time. <clears throat> this is where winter will start this year. So this is basically the coordinate system, the ecliptic coordinate system. And now the funny thing is, if you take a look at the at the Milky Way, so the Milky Way has also a coordinate system, the so-called uh, galactic coordinate system, what we will not cover it today. And in the future, when, when we will, um, work on deep sky images or so. But what's interesting is you see that the eclipt uh, the, the, um, our ecliptic plane, which is now here like almost a horizontal line, is very uh, it's very tilted to the, gal uh, to, the, to, the to our Milky Way, to our galaxy. So we are not yeah a rota so we are not like um, uh, so our, our, of mo our movement around the sun, yeah, the rotation of the entire solar system is not aligned, or the ecliptic plane is not aligned with the ecliptic uh, with the galactic plane. So there is a huge tilt. <coughs> but yeah, that's some result of some uh, yeah solar system evolution process, I guess. Now this was the ecliptic coordinate system. Let's reset our settings again. So we turn off, we focus to the sun, we turn off our um, ecliptic uh, um, grid, we turn on the ground, the atmosphere and the compass. Okay, now I see that didn't make a, a lot of sense because the sun already set. And let's move to another coordinate system, the equatorial grid. Now the equatorial grid, is um, something that is more really Earth-centric, I would say. So um, imagine you are projecting or you have like like the longitude latitude values on our Earth, but really projected to the sky. So a coordinate system that also rotates with the Earth, right? So everything is, yeah, steady state. And... Um, and 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 the telescope can that is mounted correctly, so it, which also points towards the so-called ecliptic North Pole. We had this last time, um, where we talked that the that Polaris is close to the North uh, Pole, is rotating with the sky uh, with this night sky. So if we turn on the constellation line, you see the Big Dipper or Uzamayo here. And now if we um, speed up a little bit the time. We see that, yeah, okay, that we are moving now with the with the night sky, or the the Earth is moving away. We can turn on the turn off the telescope mount, and you see everything moves like a, a anti-clockwise clock around the um, northern northern equatorial pole. There's also, of course, a south pole, but let's stick with the northern hemisphere. So this is basically how it's done. And the definition is basically the same. So also the zero zero point is uh, points towards the sun at um, when the uh, when springtime starts. So this is basically 
basically the same. But you see that um, we do not have a latitude and longitude definition. Here we have something which is called right ascension and declination. So the declination here um, is on the left side. There are a lot of values, don't be confused. I just clicked on Jupiter. We have a declination, for example, for Jupiter, which says currently minus 15 degrees. So you see here these lines, the declination, they are given in degrees. Now it's minus 15, minus 10, min um, yeah, minus 10, and then minus 5, and then 0 degrees. And 0 degrees is the line of the equator, you can say. Right, so now here in Stuttgart, I'm not in the North Pole. I'm a little bit more south, which means that I am able to also see parts of the southern hemisphere and night sky. And basically, theore or let's say, theoretically, everything below 0 degrees declination belongs to the southern hemisphere night sky. Um, which is <clears throat> yeah, which is quite nice, but yeah, you don't see much of it. And if we move our position, for example, to the to the North Pole, you will see that we cannot see anything below zero degrees. Now, okay, last time I had some issues with the uh, with searching uh, my my town, but let's go click here on the North Pole, very north. Yeah, it's as good as possible. I can also increase here now. Yeah, ninety degrees. 89 degrees north, let's say it's fine. You see now that Polaris is above my head and you can see that here at the horizon, I really don't see anything below zero degrees now. Yeah, okay, this is now because it's not really 90%, but you get the idea, right? Everything below zero degrees is hidden for me. I don't see it. Orion, Orion is gone. I don't see any planet currently. I think, yeah, Jupiter was minus 15 degrees declination. So, yeah, this is how people see it in the, no the North Pole. It's basically not changing. It's just rotating above your head. Now, let's move back to Stuttgart. So, we see also something of the Northern Hemisphere. I hope this works. This is somehow strange with the searching. That's really bad. Anyway, I just, let me just... Ah, Stuttgart, now it works. Okay, that's good. Yep, perfect. Now we are back back in southern Germany. You see now that it moved a little bit, and at the equator, uh, Polaris and the southern pole, they are at the horizon. So there you can see theoretically everything, depending on the, on the um, yeah, whether it's spring or autumn or so. Now let's take a look at the hours we have here. <clears throat> so... One major concept is that we consider the so-called meridian. So the meridian is something we can draw here, uh, this green line. And if, a, if an object crosses the meridian line, mm, it, it reaches it, its highest point for the observer. So here in Stuttgart now, I have now a star, which is actually now very close to the uh, meridian. So this star has today its highest point above the ground from now on it's going now it's descending and it's then moving below the horizon and the same applies also for jupiter so jupiter is now a little bit um uh, moved a little bit all right already to the west so it's like a jupiter not sunset but jupiter set but if we take the time back it's into yeah a few hours back then we see that Jupiter is here at the meridian, and this is its highest point currently, uh, would be the highest point. And this is also what, um, what you can see here um, with, the, uh, with the declination, with the uh, right ascension. It has now like 21 uh, hours, and the 21 hour line is also here now very close to the meridian. So this is, uh, this is very close. Let's take something that is not moving, like a, like a star, for example, um, which so uh, like Altair, for example, Altair, Altair, yeah. So what we have here, we have also here now right ascension, um, twenty hours around or nineteen hours fifteen minutes. And another important information is what we see here: the so-called mean or apparent sidereal time, so the star time, let's say. And that's a very important information. So you can imagine the, the, the night sky as a clock. 
and the right ascension is now of this object is 19 hours 55 51 minutes but the apparent sidereal time is currently 21 hours 41 minutes so like the line here and this tells us that yeah like two hours ago mm, yeah two hours ago Altair was at the meridian so we can now set our clock two hours back ah, okay around two hours it was I didn't calculate it perfectly right so yeah around two hours it reached it reached its meridian point at hi its highest point and this is of course also the point the point where it's interesting for astronomers also hobby astronomers right you want to have an object very up high in the sky so you're not bothered by light pollution you're not bothered by any um yeah fog close to the horizon and so on so the higher the object, the better the quality, of course. Also, the dis um, the so-called air mass is smaller. So, um, if you look at the horizon, now imagine um, our our Earth is a sphere, and we're looking to the horizon. We are looking through way more um, atmosphere or atmosphere layers or width than when we take a look directly to the to the zenith. So, it's directly above our heads. So having an object as high as possible is also very good for our observations. Now this is basically it, so the um, equatorial system based on the movement of our home planet and yeah with, with the rotation points equatorial north pole, south pole and, and, the, um, and the definition of the right ascension and the declination and the so-called apparent sidereal time. Now there's also a third coordinate system which is called the azimuth coordinate system but I have never seen using anybody using it. It's um, It would be completely madness using it because it's like you separate your, um, your, your sky at your location in such a grid that the zenith here is yeah like the like the north pole of your coordinate system. Now the point is, and this is a little bit the reason why it's not really feasible. First of all, the coordinate system is steady state, so it doesn't move. You see the stars are moving against the system, and this coordinate system depends also on your location. So it's basically pure chaos. So this should show you also the advantage of this equatorial system your telescope mount rotates with the stars you can orientate with the sidereal time whether an object already passed the meridian or not and you don't have to be you have, don't have to bother about your own location right this is this so don't never never take the azimuthal grid um as a, as a good reference frame for observations from planet earth the equatorial system is quite nice it's like the standard of course and um, for also for in space science or if you want to if you want to work with also with the, our planets the equatorial system makes more sense so for example we see here these planets are also very close to the ecliptic plane the sun is moving along the zero line um, and it tells us uh, yeah a little bit more about the position in our solar system there are also other coordinate systems like the galactic coordinate system. There is also, I think, something called the supergalactic coordinate system, but we will not cover it this time. We will, um, yeah, do it in the future when we work about uh, with uh, deep sky objects. Now, today, I think this is enough. Uh, I, ho I hope you learned something, uh, especially the two systems. Um, take a look again in Stellarium, um, play around a little bit to get a feeling of the systems. Um, in my next tutorial we will um, start working with coordinate systems in Python and with and using SPICE. So um, don't be confused or, or afraid, we will also take Stellarium next time as well to verify our results, to get a better understanding and feeling. Today it's more like a first introduction into these, uh, into these coordinate systems and of course a small tutorial video cannot cover the entire complexity. So stay curious guys, take a look at the Stellarium and I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Take care.